Did you wait? Did you wait on at the end? Or were you? Were you no. No, no. Yeah, we were watching in bed. It was uh, it was great. I mean, what a way to finish for them. It was awesome. It's a good reaction uh, for the city and everything? Yeah. I mean, how cool. Uh, they had an unbelievable year. And, um, you know, to finish it off the way they did down in Houston, play such a great game last night, have so many guys that they picked up halfway through contribute and, uh, you know, then have guys that have been here for a while contribute. It was really cool to see. So I'm happy for them, you know, fired up for the city. And uh, it's always fun when you're around, you know, a championship team. So it's great, great for Atlanta. Did you consider waking the kids back up? No. <laughs> it's a costly mistake. He doesn't have kids. Costly mistake. There is no, there is no chance. Uh, as far as New Orleans' as secondary goes, what, what sort of problems does Black Corps present specifically? He's a good player. Um, physical. Does a great job um, getting hands on guys, disrupting releases, uh, has good ball skills, can run. Um, you know, he's, he's a good player and, um, you know, ties in. They do a great job in their front four, front seven of uh, creating pressure and, and getting home. And those guys play aggressive on the outside. So a uh, really good player, a player that, you know, I know in this building we have a lot of respect for. After the game, Cal Fitz talked about how his matchup against Devon Gilmore was kind of like a welcome to the NFL moment. Um, how important do you think that is for his development going forward? I think, you know, every every week's huge. You know, when um, you're seven games in into your career, every experience that you have um, helps you develop and helps you become a better player. And uh, I think last week will certainly help. But... He's got the right mindset, you know, to, to get back to work, um, to, to try and improve, to, you know, learn from the good, learn from the mistakes, and uh, use that all as, as fuel for getting better. And uh, if he keeps that approach, he's going to be just fine. And uh, looking back over your career, like, do you have a moment where you were like, it wasn't necessarily a, a positive that was kind of like, oh, man, okay, this is the NFL. Like, it's real. <laughs> and lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they, they, they still happen. You know, the, the old line is in the NFL, you're, you know, a week away from being humbled because uh, there's great coaches and great players uh, across the board. And so uh, you have to put in the work every week and, and you have to get yourself, you know, mentally, mentally and, and physically and emotionally prepared to go compete at your best. Um, but I, you know, I've had, I've had a lot of those throughout my career. You know, I think their consistency, um, you know, whether it be, you know, leading the league in passing or leading the re league in rushing attempts, they find ways to, to get the job done. And I, I've always had, you know, uh, a respect for Sean and, and what he does and how he puts his players, you know, in position to be successful. And, um, you know, they had a lot of continuity for a long time with Drew there, but he's done a great job of, of evolving and doing different things with the different guys. Um, you know, that, that he's had. And, um, you know, I think that's the sign of, of good coaches, you know, their ability to, to adapt and, and adjust, uh, but still get the best out of players. You guys ever had a chance to sit down somewhere and, you know, shoot the breeze for 30 minutes and talk about this? I have not. You know, I, I've, um, I've, I've only really seen him in passing uh, at different times. But, um, you know, I'm not sure he, he would share much or I would share much at this point <laughs> of our lives, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are, are there quarterbacks? I mean, are there quarterbacks and players that you do do that with and share a lot of information with? I mean, I wouldn't say a lot of information. No, I, I think you talk about things like process, um, you know, and training and different things like that. Um, but as far as you know, what you're doing, why you're doing, how you're using guys, I think you know, I've I've always tried to keep those things in house. Who, who are some of those guys over your career that you have spent a lot of time talking? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on, you know, at what point in your career. Uh, I remember, you know, when I first got here, um, I spent some time with Rich Gannon, who that seems like a long time ago, but, um, you know, wasn't that far removed of being one of the best quarterbacks in the league and known for being a guy that could prepare uh, as good as anybody. And he really laid out a good template for me as a young player. And 
uh, gave me a lot of his time, and I appreciate that. I've gotten to know Peyton um, Manning really well, um, and at different points, he invited me to play golf and you know just to pick his brain about some different things. And uh, he was he was always helpful when it came to those type of things like training or process or or um, you know stuff like that. So that's really early in my career. The two guys that uh, you know were kind with their time and um, you know provided some insight for me. Did that evolve into guys like Matthew and, and maybe some other guys too? Yeah, I think you know I, I think with the 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 guys that um, you know are more your age, it's more just about seeing each other as friends and um, you know being there as a friend to support them through you know different things that are going on in their life. But um, that's that's more of what it's evolved into later in my career. And the last question on this kind of thread of things for me is like, are you now the old guy like doing that with some some younger guys in the league? Or? Uh, I don't mean that as a slight, but, you know, I mean. No, it? yeah. No, I, you know, I have. I've had the opportunity to meet some of the younger guys, whether it be doing some training out in California uh, and, and have, you know, passed along just, you know, tips for training. Like I said, training, preparation, uh, routine, those kind of things. And, you know, how I'm a believer in, in that, you know, leads to success. And so, yeah, it happens quickly. You know, you go from being the guy seeking a lot of advice uh, because it's new to you to the guy that people are coming to to seek for advice. But. Um, yeah, it, it, it changes quickly. Is there a guy that you kind of like, that you've been kind of Gannon or, or Peyton to? You'd have to ask them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if they've taken my advice and thrown it right in the trash or, you know, whatever they've, they've done. But there's been a handful of guys um, that I've worked with, the guys at 3DQB uh, out in Southern California uh, that I've gotten a chance to talk to. So you talked about the job Tajay Sharp did last week, uh, uh, trying to fill that void. And you think that's going to be a different story every week uh, if we face an indefinite period of time, you know, without doubt? Yeah, I think, you know, um, it, it's by committee. You know, we, we want to get production by committee and, and try and use, uh, you know, all of our guys in, in ways that they can help us. But we certainly have trust in Tajay. He's done a great job for us all year. I think last week, you know, the, the um, targets probably were up a little bit, but, I mean, at, at different points, points throughout the season. I think of the New York Giants game where we had a critical third down. He comes up with a catch for us in the red area, keeps our drive moving. Uh, there's different points like that throughout the year that, you know, he's building, you know, that, that confidence and trust. And uh, I thought he did a nice job for us last week. But I think it'll be by committee moving forward. How, uh, how, how good is it for you to have uh, last week? I think your running backs combined for, for 10 catches uh, to, to have that in your back pocket is another outlet for us. Yeah, you talk about, you know, getting production from not only different guys in the wide receiver group, but, you know, different position groups. Uh, we're, we're lucky we have versatile players, guys that, you know, uh, can do a lot of different things, and, and um, that's going to help us moving forward. I know we spoke, uh, I think it was after the bye week, and you were saying kind of like the next progression, the next step of this offense is, is to be more consistent, to play more consistently. And I was just curious kind of like when, in your mind, like what needs to happen in order to tell kind of take that next step for this offense? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, we're making strides in that direction. I think last last week was not what we wanted to do. And, you know, it comes back to protecting the football. Um, you know, turning the football hurts, uh, particularly in red area uh, where you're not getting points. And then capitalizing on opportunities, short field, beginning of the game, uh, to come away with three points is disappointing. You want to be able to... Uh, go ahead and score. So I think we've got to be a little bit more opportunistic when we get our good chances, short fields. Um, you like to take advantage of those and certainly can't turn the football over. When you, were, when you went back and watched, was there one area that really stuck at you? Like, man, like that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Why did, that, why did you miss chance X or, or Y? I'm sorry. Um, I mean, it, it, it's – you know, it's never just one thing. Uh, there's there's multiple things you look at that, you know, across the board we could have done better. I think, you know, when, when you're individually looking at it, you know, a turnover in the red area uh, in the second quarter, I mean, that that's a chance to make that game different. I think it was 10-3 at the time. And so to come away with no points uh, and not a touchdown there, that's, you know, you can change the outcome of games. And, you know, I understand mistakes are going to happen as part of it. You know, we're, we're all human and, and – and playing sports, it's it's not perfect. But, um, you know, if we want to be the kind of football team I think we can be, we've got to capitalize, and I've got to do a better job in that area. Anything else? How did, how did the trick or treater go? 
Trick or treating was good. Uh, my kids had a great time. So um, it's all that matters. They had a great time. <laughs> uh, I didn't steal any. I'm not a big sweet tooth. So uh, Halloween's, you know, so I, I prefer some of the other holidays over Halloween. Were you disappointed nobody wore your jersey? Uh, of my kids? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know where I I know where I <laughs> work in the pecking order. Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 reminded of that all too often at home. This is definitely a reach, but um, with the the Braves winning the World Series, obviously, and you know them hovering at 500 in the beginning of the season, like like you guys are right now, can you draw any similarities to you know making that turn toward the middle of the season where you can you can get on a run and maybe make a playoff push uh, at the end? Yeah, I think there's great parallels in sports. Um, you know, when, when you look around at what different teams have done um, and, and you look specifically at the Braves, you know, it was a team that, you know, struggled to get over 500 until three quarters of the way through the season, mid-August. And, um, you know, started to play their best baseball towards the end, started to come together as a team and, and rely and count on each other. Um, read an awesome article by Jock Peterson um, that was, you know, that – I think really poignant. It's little things that, that kind of change um, the mindset, the culture, the attitude. And, um, you know, I, I, I do think, I do think you, you need to learn from others, you know, and, and, and how other teams have come together. And, you know, I think they did a great job with it. So I, I certainly think guys use that as motivation or uh, inspiration for, you know, us to, to be able to maybe pull ourselves together and get to a spot where um, we can be in the mix late in the year. You guys specifically talked about that in the locker room, whether it was today or whether it was over the last week or so. Yeah, I mean, guys, guys have been talking about the Braves for the last month, you know, and, and what they're going through. And so those conversations definitely come up. Are you the one leading those conversations, or is that coming from elsewhere and you're just kind of listening at this point? Uh, both. You know, uh, uh, listen, I, I love watching baseball, and, um, and I like, you know, talking about it with our guys. But it's not just me. I mean, it's, it's definitely across the board. Guys, we're into it. The concept of yeah no I'm saying I think everybody everybody kind of recognizes you know how they played and what they've gone through this year and how it parallels similar to how we've started this season um, you know so hopefully like I said we can you know use that as motivation or um, you know it gets us it gets us going is there anything you can you can share about um, what you and the other teammates have done to, to reach out to, to Kelvin I think that's personal you know I, I think the number one thing is you know, we, we all love and support him and, uh, you know, wish him the best. And, um, you know, when whenever it is that, that he's back here, we open, you know, we're going to welcome back with open arms. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks man. Man.